to get this cardinal. And the uh, woodpecker. She's in there. There she is. That's my little cardinal friend. The very size. That was a collared dove. It's a dove. There's a crow. That's a jaybird making that sound. I don't know why they have to announce when they come and when they leave. There's a wobbler. No, I think that's a mockingbird. Hey. How you doing, little one? These birds are not sick from what I can see. suddenly them. these over here are mating in the tree squirrels come on out of there come on There's one more person who hadn't showed up yet, and that's the woodpecker. Anybody seen the woodpecker? There she is. Okay, I see you. Gotta, I gotta wait for her to come down. See the sparrow. There's a sparrow coming in.
I love you too. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna stop disturbing you. Bye bye. <sighs> See you later. So long, so long. I think the ravens are back. Shalom, shalom. I hear those heavy footsteps on my roof. But I haven't seen them in the yard, but they're scaring everybody else away. Squirrels are in the tree. There's supposed to be some bird buyers going around <clears throat> in the uh, northeastern part of the um, of the country, uh, Virginia. I think they said Philadelphia area. Um, the birds there, the young birds are getting some type of virus and they're dying. Uh, they're getting swollen eyes and um, white crusty film around their eyes that makes them blind and they're dying. I think it's malnutrition, but it could also be uh, part of the uh, apocalypse of Abraham uh, plague of the uh, cattle and the animals. Um, I think it's malnutrition more than anything because of the winter storm. A lot of the trees were damaged. Some of our trees down here in Texas are damaged too. So there aren't as many berries. There aren't as many uh, seeded flowers. There aren't as many uh, insects as there were uh, prior to the storm. A lot of stuff died off. Uh, some of the trees are coming back, but um, they don't have the same amount of nuts that they had. You know, like my acorn tree is dying back here. 
and uh, the few little um, berries that are hanging on there, they're kind of like rotted off. Those branches need to be pruned off because the tree is dying. Um, it's, it's shedding leaves that it had not shed before. You know, it doesn't shed in the summertime or the spring. But I do see uh, lizards coming back. I've seen uh, two woodpeckers in my yard. I've seen lots of doves. They seem healthy to me. I haven't noticed anything unusual. Um, last week, because of the 4th of July, there were a lot of extra birds and squirrels in the yard because... They ran from the park over here because of the fireworks. And um, like I said, you know, there, there's been an abundance of birds in my area. So I haven't noticed any dead birds in the yard or uh, out in the front yard or along the sidewalk or anything. I haven't seen anything like that. They seem pretty healthy. So as long as they're getting enough to eat. If they're not getting enough to eat, they're going to be malnutrition and they're going to be susceptible to, um, you know, sicknesses, viruses and illnesses. They won't recover. So uh, if you can afford to go ahead and throw out some seeds and some berries and some nuts. You know, some sunflower seeds are very inexpensive if you can get them. Uh, the shelled and the unshelled, uh, the black seeds, uh, black oil seed, bird feed is good. The the economy wild bird seed, which has the felt in it, felt, I mean the silt in it, um, sweet in it. Uh, you can use that. Um, but what I do is I just toss it out along the lawn. I scatter it out through the lawn because they need to be able to gather for themselves. And this way, they're not sharing a feeder. They're not sharing a bird bath. I don't have the bird bath up. Uh, you know, something just told me don't put it out because of the pathogens. But... um. I don't. Ha I haven't seen any sickly birds. I saw one bird that got burned from the fireworks. That's about it. And um, haven't seen him around either. I saw him for about a day or two, and I haven't seen him around. But um, I've had more birds than usual to come to the yard at any one time, and uh, mostly jays and doves. I've seen both species of um, the collared dove. I've seen about maybe 12 or more. Uh, I've seen the woodpecker. I've seen cardinals, uh, the brown wobblers, crows. I've, I've also seen ravens. The ravens are back over here. They don't really stay, though, because this is really not their, their territory. But when they can't find food, they come over this way. So um, I've seen the morning dove as well, which is a, a little bit smaller um, bird. The morning dove has um, spots on the back. of um, uh, It has a spotted print on the back, whereas the collared dove is just all gray looks more like a pigeon but you can tell by the beak that uh, it's not a pigeon and um, the collared doves like the one that's in here I don't know if you can see it because I'm behind the screen um, has like a little black it, 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 the uh, the collar could be black or white it's kind of like a stripe around the neck or right on the neck so that's why we call them collared doves. It's like a collar, you know, like a shirt collar. So, um, but um, I'm not outside with them. I'm inside 
which uh, because if, if there is a virus that can pass on to um, humans, I'm better off just filming from inside. I might try to take the screen off. I have to unscrew it and pop it off. And uh, it's, it's going to be kind of hard to put back on if I, if I can take it off. But then they'll see me and they might not want to come in the yard. Um, but um, I noticed that uh, because it was really hot last week, it was like in the 90s, almost in the 100s. Some of the birds did um, lose a few plumes, you know, feathers. I have some of those feathers, and uh, what I do is um, I'll wash them in soap and water and a little bit of alcohol solution um, to sterilize them, and, uh, and I let them dry out and fluff out. But uh, I have a collection of jay feathers and dove feathers, and um, because that's mostly who's been in the yard. I haven't collected any crow feathers yet. Uh, I guess they'll gift them to me when they get ready to, if they want to or not. Those are the benefits of, um, you know, caring for nature. But that's all the information that I have today. They're, they are warning us that uh, we should not um, touch a dead bird if we see it. If you do, wear a mask and handle it with gloves. Uh, put it in a Ziploc bag and dispose of it. Uh, they're also saying if you notice anything, uh, I guess maybe excrement, not to touch it. You know, usually if the birds poop on my back porch, I usually wash it down with Lysol. Uh, you can also use a little bit of bleach solution. Of course, they don't really like that bleach smell. It, you know, they won't come and feed if they smell the bleach. But uh, I guess you could use pine saw or uh, Lysol and a little water solution to, to hose your, your porch down, wash your porch down. And that, that will keep it clean and sanitary. Um, and if you could manage to throw the seeds away from your porch, maybe scatter it out further out in the backyard. But then you'll need a zoom lens so that you can, <clears throat> you'll need a zoom lens to, to get them. If it's more than 15 feet away, you're going to need a, a zoom lens to, to, to do a close-up. But um, that's all the information that I have. Um, but they're calling it a bird virus or a bird plague and they're getting um, all scary you know telling warning people not to feed the squirrels and, and and they're telling us not to go near the birds and it's like they're it's almost like they're trying to psych us up you know like it could pass on to to humans it could jump to humans but um I just love them you know, I mean, is if, if they start acting crazy, then you have a reason not to get near them. Um, but I usually keep at least six feet distance from them, even when I'm in the yard. They're not that bold to come right up to me because I've never fed them out of my hand. I would avoid feeding them from the hand, you know, especially if you're at the park. And you're not, you're not where you can actually watch them. Like from my backyard, I've been watching them for like months. So I would know if there was anything weird. Um, the only dead bird that was in my yard was the one that was killed by the hawk. And the hawk came back and got it. And that was because my neighbor's dog had kind of chased it. But, um, but the hawk did come back a couple hours later to get his prey and uh, there was nothing wrong with that bird uh, I know the squirrels when they were born they looked really scrawny and malnutrition and that's why I've just as long as I can afford to 
I put out seeds and nuts. And I do a variety of nuts, not just sunflower seeds, not just black seeds or uh, wild bird feed, but uh, which is really just millet and corn uh, because they don't always eat the corn. The corn started growing in my yard. They weren't eating that corn. Uh, I don't know if it was just too hard for them or if it wasn't parboiled enough. I don't know, but they just weren't eating it. The crows love it, but um, the smaller birds, they, they prefer the millet and the sunflower seeds. So I will put out sunflower seeds, sometimes walnuts, almonds, uh, cashews when I have extra cashew nuts. Uh, sometimes I'll put out trail mix. Uh, sometimes I'll put out, um, I try to do berries every day because I always get berries, blueberries, blackberries. I mean, like I eat that all the time myself. So I just put in a cup, half a cup, maybe to a cup of berries because there are no berries on the trees, y'all. I haven't seen any berries this year. Uh, so that's that right there alone. That's that. Those are the uh, types of foods that help them to keep up their protein and uh, their um, to help build up their immune system. So if they don't have any berries, there aren't any berries on the trees. Uh, the nut trees, the acorn trees are all withered up from the storm and they may have green leaves on them, but you got to look for the nut. Where, where are the nuts? Where are the berries? The pecan trees have some pecans growing on them, but they won't be ready till like October. So, um, and that includes the pine nuts as well. You know, uh, so where where is their food? So if they don't have access to food, um, you know, they, they can feed on some little ants, uh, some slugs and snails if they can get to them. But if there isn't any uh, nutrients in the soil, there's not going to be any worms in that soil. There's not going to be any centipedes and little roly-polies, we call them. So that's, that is their diet. That's their main diet. And um, they don't eat the red ants, but they will eat the little black ones. Um, so you have to look at it that way. You know, where is their food? What are they going to eat? So that's why, as long as I can afford to, I throw out two to three cups of seeds. And I might put in like a, a cup of nuts, mix it in there. And I just, you know, toss it out on the lawn. You know, I don't put a bowl out. I don't put a feeder out. Look at that big lizard on my porch. I'm surprised the um, crows haven't got him. But maybe he's too big for them. But they're, they've come back. These big, I don't know if I can get it. I can get you to see it. It's on the porch right there. Big lizard. See that? He's moving around in the shadow with the, um, he's right there on the edge of the porch. So, that's why I, um, I put a little food out there every chance I get. You know, I do it at least once a day. You know, usually just before noon or early in the morning. If I have to leave, I put it out early around 8 in the morning. You know, I put something out there. Um, I will put out a bowl full, which is about maybe maybe a gallon, half a gallon to a gallon of uh, feed and seeds and nuts. And I'll throw some berries in there. If all I've got left is our uh, chips, uh, I'll put some, some corn chips in there or some banana chips. You know, whatever snacks I have, uh, whatever snacks I have, I, I will share it and mix it in with the feed and the nuts. 
so that they can get some type of nutrients from it because they have to eat. And if the trees are barren, they're not going to have much to eat. And they are going to be malnutrition. You know, so um, those are just some of the tips that I have for today. Um, you know, I, I've been seeing a lot of little sparrows, uh, which is good. They don't, I haven't seen any sick birds in my yard nor out front, nor even along the sidewalks. And so, um, but as you can see this tree right here, uh, th that tree died, but I've got a vine and a rose bush, bush next to it that is growing over it. But that, that tree has been dead now since the winter storm. So that just goes to show you how barren the trees are. And, um, uh, you know, they use it for a little perch. So uh, the lawn man has not cut it down because my vine is growing over it. I don't know why they didn't just go on and, and just cut it because that tree is dead. But that's what's going on there. And uh, they fly around in there. They use it for a little perch. And I'm fine with that. You know, they can hide in there when the hawk comes through. It, it provides a little bit of cover for them, but there's no green on it. You know, if it weren't for the vine and the rose bush growing over it, which uh, roses can tolerate the cold. So that's why they didn't die. And um, some of the other things I've seen, I've seen, um, I saw a monarch butterfly kind of early for this year and I've seen yellow butterflies uh, that's usually what I usually see in June and July are uh, yellow butterflies so nature is coming back this lizard is just sitting there you can see his, his tail he's about maybe about 7 inches long he's a pretty big one I've seen some salamanders come back as well. I'm surprised they survived the winter, but it's hot now, so they're coming back. This lizard here, I don't know what species it is. I'll have to look it up. I'll have to look it up. But um, it's like they can hear my voice, but they can't see me through the screen, so that's why they're hopping around, jumping around all free and everything. But if I were to open the door and stick my head out there, you won't see them. They will, they will hide. They will run off somewhere and hide. Which I guess they should do because, you know, that, that keeps pathogens down to a, a bare minimum uh, between humans and animals. You know, but... um. Don't be afraid to throw some seeds out to them and some berries and some nuts because they need nutrition. And if you don't see any berries on the trees, that means they're not going to have any food. If you don't see any nuts on the trees, if the trees are barren, if they're all withered up and looking like thickets, that is a famine. So we're not the only ones who suffer from famine. Uh, the animals suffer from famine as well. Let me see if I can enlarge it. Nope. I messed it up. All right. So I can't do that. I was going to show you the lizard. But anyway, that's all for today. Take care of nature. Nature will take care of you. All blessings. All praises to the Most High. Shalom.